Hello, welcome everybody to another kind of just like podcast style talking about altering Magic the Gathering cards. My favorite subject because it's all I it's all I do all night, all day, all afternoon, all morning. Is morning the next one? We are trying to make this Elish Norn as cool as possible, and that is a subject. We are making things cool. So I'm picking out my colors that I need to add into this Elish Norn to make her cool. I've already picked this cadmium red, and I'm looking for wherever it is. What is it? Rose Mater? Rose Mater. Those are the two colors I really want. So, if you're watching this, thank you. Like and subscribe. I figured you already are, but, you know, we gonna ask. We gonna ask. Uh, right now, I have a hurricane coming in uh, on top of me. I'm in Florida, and uh, when there's a hurricane, why not paint? So that's what I'm doing. You can see my wet palette on the right side. It's not very wet on the part that I just put that on. And I'm going to try to paint this and talk about how to make things cool. So let's get into it now that I have this adorable intro for almost two minutes now. So to make things cool, in my opinion, they need to look a little bit different than what WotC puts out. And so I've talked about this before in my, uh, my previous video about um, how to make things unique. Unique is definitely something that is uh, in life, I think, extremely important. But in Magic cards, it's very important as well. Making things unique is very, very important. Making things cool means people are going to want to buy it. So, the way that I think I do a good job of making things cool is by getting people interested on Instagram, on hopefully YouTube, if you're watching this, making people interested in what I'm doing and showcasing that altered art is something that people want and it's something that people think is cool and therefore you should spend your hard earned money on it. So for me, I mean, who knows how long this is gonna last. To be honest, I think this is it's coming into the death throes of me selling these cards. So if you want one, email me. But I feel like the, the Magic the Gathering uh, community has spent a ton of money in the past year for the pandemic picking up cool versions of cards. And thankfully, uh, I am part of what people want to spend their money on. Why people like altars is because they're cool. You know, I think they're cool. Um, I'll have like a, a foil version of a card that I think is cool, but then you know what? If I get an altar of it, or I, obviously I alter it myself, but if I alter it, that foil signed version is going to go up for sale because the altered version is so much cooler. And I know other people think the same way. Getting a hand painted one of one is so cool in anything. Oh, that's too much white. In anything, it's so cool to get a one of one anything. I mean, obviously. That's why art sells for so much. You have a one of one. No one else, no one else can get that squid liquor piece or that, you know, for me, that Sebastian Coolidge piece. That's my favorite artist, you know, like because it's a one of one, you have the only one and you can, if you like bragging, which, you know, some of us do, uh, pointing the finger straight at myself, it, it's, someone goes, wow, I really like that. I'd be like, yeah, that was, there's only one of them and I have the only one. That's super cool. So if people want that in their magic cards, which I think a lot of us do, because a lot of us are collectors, what makes that happen? And if you're an artist, if you are a, uh, 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 especially, oh my God, they came out like perfect, like first shot. Look at how good that little drapery looks. A little bit of highlight on that, a little bit of highlight down here. Damn, that looks good. 
because it's a one of one. Oh my god, is the, is the light too bright to kind of see everything? Here, let's put it down here. All right, that light's a little better, I think. Because it's a one of one, you want to advertise it as such. And then also, you want to make something that someone is going to want to spend. For me, my secret is I try to make $35 on every card. Oh, I fucked up. I try to make $35 on every card. So if you see any of my cards up for sale, uh, between the fees and the cost of the raw card and the shipping, after all is said and done, I'm trying to walk away with $35 for a simple border extension. Obviously, if, we, uh, if we're putting some crazy image on there, uh, you know, your boy's trying to walk away a little bit more. But normally, I'm going 35 bucks. So I'm trying to make 35 bucks on it. How am I going to convince someone to spend an extra $45 on something? You know? Between the... Between the... Uh, that looks good. Does that, does that look good on the... Yeah, I guess you can kind of see stuff. I feel like this camera should be better, but whatever. Oh, does that look cool? Yeah, I feel like that's better. To, to convince someone to give you all their money, give you way more money than this card's worth, this, this you know, Elish Norn is 25 bucks. I sold it for, what, 69? You know what I'm saying? Like, to have to ask someone for extra money, you need for it to be someone something that someone wants to show off. Because, I mean, I love being self-critical. It's something that I feel like allows you to grow way faster than anything else but when you're telling someone hey i want extra money what makes that what makes that braggadocious feeling so let's get into it what i think makes extend or what makes sorry i can't like talk and paint at the same time tonight what makes altered arts special and cool is that you can tell it's an altered art from far away, which Watsy right now is definitely taking away from us because Watsy is making their own altered arts, quote unquote. If you look at like the new uh, Planeswalkers, things like that, they're definitely putting us all out of business. I'll be the first one to tell you that. But what makes this look cool? They put out a bunch of Elish Norns in the past. And they're putting out more Elish Norns in the future. What makes anyone want to buy mine? So I am extending her art as far out that I could see it. I am... Oh, there we go. This uh, toothpick kind of sucks like frayed. I am taking uh, Igor's idea of Elish Norn and putting her cloak out. I'm extending this little arm here, this little this little guy's arm, which I need to find the right brown. There we go, we're gonna go with a burnt sienna. Ugh, this one's closed up pretty tight. A little burnt sienna there. I am pouring way too much. You can tell, I mean, you can tell I've been drinking <laughs> by how much of a paint I squirt out. I'm, I'm my, my motor functions are not super duper there. So when I get a card that I want to paint for somebody, the number one thing I'm thinking of is how can I make this cooler than it looks? How can I make this the coolest Elish Norn possible? And for me, it's being able to see this thing from across the table. So most of my... Um, most of my clients play EDH. So they're playing in a multiplayer format. And in this multiplayer format, they are wanting to stand out. Maybe Elish Norn is their commander. Maybe Elish Norn, for me, Elish Norn's like my win con in my Hate Bears deck. I play uh, double Timna. And uh, there's a couple win cons for sure, but Elish Norn definitely feels the best. It's pretty Fine. It's pretty fit. Like, it's the final. Elish Norn comes down. I have six creatures. Everyone should be at a pretty low, low life, title, life total. I'm probably going to win. 
So I want my bomb to come down and look cool as shit. And I want everybody to see it from across the table, because now we're all back to doing table stuff. You have to figure out whatever you're painting, how to make it look really cool from far away. So right now I'm gonna show you the technique I use for her to be really cool from far away. I take a blob of this red, and then I put some water down. What about two water, a little bit of red, and I'm going to take it and take this watered down red and loosely pass it right over this text box. To do it down here, I need to clean up a little bit. But when you see all this color all around the Elishnorn, extended color, people are gonna, wow, that's super cool. And I'd like to think it is really cool. But you want this to look really good from far away. Obviously, that can't be done for everything. Obviously, you can't do this big cloak for everything. You can't, you know, put blood everywhere, you know? I'm gonna be doing a Gore Muldrock later tonight, uh, the, the salamander guy. And obviously, I'm not gonna put blood all over the place. Like, that's not his feeling. However, the feeling of an Elishnorn is that she's big and powerful and all over the place. She is larger than life. She is like, I'd like to think of her as like the drag queen of magic. Obviously of Phyrexia, she's like boss. But she's definitely like the queen bee in magic. Everybody loves Ellis Norton. She is so good. She's incredibly powerful. I mean, talk to whoever you want. Super hot, whatever she is. Everyone's got a story about how much they like her. Played her in Standard, all that stuff. Played her in Modern. One of my favorite Modern decks at her is like one of the wing cons. Because in Modern, I mean, you drop an Elish Norn, there's very few decks that are gonna be very happy about it. So how to make things cool is understand that from far away, people want this thing to really pop out. Say out of all my cards, Elish Norn is probably one of the top ones that I have sold. As you can tell by me continually painting her. Now that I have that like just red down, I'm gonna do like a red black wash because blood is definitely not just that bright. I'm gonna using K, KP, what the flock is this? K, KP Cadmium Red. Obviously you're using a little bit more darkness than that. That's not the blood does not come out that color. So as this is drying, I'm going to put in this m definitely more blood red. And when you're working with blood, I try to make it nice and messy. Because if you're like me and you like some horror stuff, blood is messily everywhere. And I really like how messy blood gets. If someone's bleeding, it's normally not in a straight line or, you know, they're not nicely bleeding into a place where everyone can, you know, uh, hang out with them, not hang out with their blood. I was about to say hang out with their blood, where everyone can, you know, uh, clean up their blood. They're normally like, oh my god, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. Someone come get me. That was an interesting signature I'm making. Let's continue with it. Uh, with your signature, I kind of like, always like the signatures look just a little bit different sometimes. So I did an interesting mustache there. This person's going to get a cool one. So, before I've talked about uniqueness and how to make unique uh, feelings uh, in your cards. For this, you're kind of wanting to feel the same way of uniqueness. I'll link uniqueness up top. You want to make sure that somebody can be like, whoa. That is the coolest Elish Norn I've ever seen. Or, oh, that is the most interesting, which is what people say when they kind of don't like your stuff, but that is the most crazy version of that card, that iconic card, because again, I'm doing a pretty iconic card that I've ever seen. Wow, that's so unique. I can't believe that's, you know... That's your Elish Norn. Out of all the Elish Norns you could have, because they're making a couple of them, out of all the Elish Norns you could have, 
this is the one you chose. Because my Elish Norn, the one you're looking at right now, definitely looks different than every other Elish Norn. You're not going to find another one that looks like this. However, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Obviously. So, when you're making something and you're making something cool, go for those small amount of people who are going to buy it. That's actually something that I heard uh, about, like, attracting some sort of, uh, uh, some sort of partner. Is that, like, don't look like everybody else. Look like you, and you'll attract that, like, you know, 1% or, you know, 0.1% of humanity that finds you attractive. If you're just you time, like, you up to a million. And try to do that with your magic cards as well. You don't have to make everybody happy with these. Believe me, I put these on Reddit, and people go, Hey, what the fuck did you just do to my $20 card? Or to that $20 card. My, I'm pretty... All my, uh, all my customers are pretty happy with me. But people who are not my customers are like, I can't believe you did that to an Elish Norn. You know? And they take... I like how they take ownership, like, every Elish Norn's their Elish Norn. Like, you know how many Elish Norns are out there in the world? So, when making this, try to make it something that you would want to show off, that you are proud of. You say, this is the kind of Elish Norn that I want to play with. And don't let anyone else deter you, because you are going for, when you're doing altars, you're going for cool. It's really what you're going for. You can lie to yourself and say you're not. Oh, no, I'm going for, you know... No, no, no. The only word you're going for is cool. It really is. You're going to make... You want to make the coolest version of that card that's ever existed. So do that, but with the mindset that from far away, people are going to look at it. And you want it to be legible. I mean, this is this is just the, the altered art Bible, is what I'm telling you right now. You want it to be legible, a legible card... You want it to look like the original card. You want it to look like its base. So make sure that, like what I'm doing right now, don't obfuscate the name. Don't obfuscate or hide the mana cost. Don't do that. Because you also want people to want to buy your card and be able to play that at tournaments if their head judge is cool. What's cool about Elgin Horn is you, pretty much any deck only wants one. I can't think of a deck in Modern or Legacy or EDH, obviously that wouldn't want, or that wants more than one. So this is going to be somebody's only Elish Norn. You want it to be like, boom, they put it down, the crowd goes wild, holy crap, the queen is here. So when making it, and when making your uh, decisions for where you're going to put your efforts, make sure that your artistic efforts are put towards something that can be seen from far away. Like, this Elish Norn is going to be full art, which is pretty obvious. But also, you can see her cape come up. You know, there's a, there's that crack I put in there. You want to make sure that people from far away go, Whoa, that Elish Norn is different, unique, and I can see that from very far away. This thing is just like straight white to blend in. So she's about done. I'm just going through and like doing all the, the cutesy um, blending. What I do at the end of cards is I literally like make a circle around the card to make sure everything's doing well. So like I'll start from the left side. As I'm saying that, I'm seeing stuff I need to take care of. I'll start from the left side. And I'll just go around the card and clean it all up and make sure that my edges are straight and I'm not missing a piece of paint somewhere for me I mean I was I've had ADD for my entire life for me I will forget I meant to like let this dry and then put another layer of black so as I'm going around the card I'm making sure everything's nice see I almost forgot to clean up the, uh, the anti-counterfeit part that I've partially painted over and that's just because I've been too busy talking about capes, you know? 
and coolness, and I forgot to do the thing that a lot of people come to Alteris for, and not just buy it on the internet, or buy, I'm sorry, buy it on the, uh, uh, by a proxy, is because you have this little sticker here that says that it's real. So you gotta clean that up, make it look real nice. You gotta clean everything up. But if I'm going from left all the way down to right, I can go and look again and make sure everything is buttoned up and is tight. This is still drying. I wonder if I can put a couple lines down as it's drying. Oh, hell yeah. Arm looks good, that looks good. I can just brush that off. So, the Elish Norton's pretty much done. What I really like about doing these Elish Norton's is that you can get, you don't have to be super precise because this version of Elish Norton is like all over the place, crazy lady. So you can keep it a little messy. One of my tricks to kind of clean up the paint that you can't kind of see is using this brush that's just been like whittled down to a very short, stubby, short brush. And with that, you can go through and kind of like, just with a wet brush, kind of touch up stuff and take out a couple of the things you don't want. But I mean, she's looking good. I need to extend this darkness a little bit into me. You want to make sure all your blends look really good when you're going around things. Blend, blend, blend. Oh, kind of fucked it up. comes the hurricane. I don't know if you can hear it outside. Hurricane Elsa's coming. All right, this one's about done. I think it's done. Probably give it another look over once everything's a little bit more um, dried. But she's looking real good. Uh, the number one thing that this card does that sells it is its uniqueness and its cool factor. So I'm going to keep on going through, going around, and making sure that it looks as cool as the original that I kind of put up for sale and that it looks as cool as I think it should look because once you drop this girl down, like I can see a little bit coming down. I got to make the, the cape a little more opaque. But like when you're going around and looking at your card and when you're finally finished the card, you want to ask yourself, is this the coolest version of this card out there? That's what I do. So, it's not about, I mean, yes, it's obviously about execution. Whoops, I just fucked up. It's not, a, it's definitely about execution, for sure. You want to make it look as cool as possible and, like, do a good job at it. But for the most part, when you're starting, you're trying to go with a vision of making this thing look the coolest possible. And for me, that's always finding where the art ends on the card and expanding it out fully. You really, really want to say... Where is this cape going? You know, is she holding blood? Because if she's holding blood and the blood's dripping down, where's the blood going? You know, you want to really understand where your card is at all times when you're expanding everything out. Because we're only working a couple inches out to the side. I mean, we're, we're working about half an inch on each side, you know, out to the side. So when you're doing that, you want to make sure that you're extending the art in the smartest way and making it look as cool as possible. So this one definitely looks super cool because our cape is going out and the, the arm is coming out a little bit more. This, this little guy's arm. But I also have the blood and the, and, the, and the shadows and all that stuff in there. So remember to try your very best when you're altering, because I mean, I hate to be this guy, but what, what's the point of altering it if you're not making it the coolest version of that card possible? So go forth, go forth and make some fucking really unique stuff. Tag me in all of your uh, all of your accomplishments. If you have any questions about where to go on your card, I am very very close by. Hit me up on Instagram, Paintings of Steve Brown. That's the number one place I can respond to you. And I'm down to help you. I'm down to help you make things look as cool as possible. Especially if you got to the end of this video. <sighs> Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, tell all your friends about me. Uh, once I get to 2K on YouTube, I'll do a giveaway. See you guys.